Welcome again to the Cisco ASA Fundamentals series. My name is Ahmad Mukhtar and today is lecture number 4, Telnet or SSH of the ASA and what things you need to take care of while implementing Telnet or SSH. First off, interesting facts of the Cisco ASA firewall in terms of management. This basically means how a firewall behaves when it is configured for remote access management. And then we will look at the remote management security differences between an iOS and a Cisco ASA. What that basically means is when you configure Telnet or SSH on an iOS device and you go ahead now for securing it, you basically have to go through this process of creating ACLs and applying them to align VDYs and to the interface levels. Um, so how does the firewall behave in this manner? So we will be looking at that and then configuring Telnet and SSH on the ASA. Let's begin. Okay, interesting facts of the Cisco ASA firewall. First off, you can only Telnet on interfaces with a security level of 100. If you've seen my older lectures, you know that the security level ranges from 0 to 100. 100 is the most trusted one. By this line, we can safely assume that any security level of 0 to 99 won't entertain any Telnet packets. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that you cannot escape the enable password. If you come from an iOS realm, you know that if you assign a privileged level of 15 to a username, it can bypass this enable password and go straight towards the privilege mode. But that's not gonna happen in the ASA firewall. The reason is that it is made that way. So you can't skip it, but you can tune it to some extent. Next up is interface ACLs don't affect management traffic. And that is the best thing I can ever assume because if you're sitting on a remote site, if you're sitting in Lahore and trying to manage a router in Karachi and you basically go ahead and, and you have telnet it over on port 23 and you're making an access list and you forget to allow the line of port 23 that has been initiated from the outside and you basically apply the ACL then most of you will know what happens your terminal just freezes wherever it is and that is not good my friend and you have to call a guy in Karachi and say hey would you please reboot the router Oh, uh, he'll say, oh no, production services will be halted. I can't do that. So that's a hassle. But in firewalls, that doesn't happen because the interface ACLs don't affect the management traffic. Management traffic would be 20 port on port 22, 23, port 80, and even ICMP is in that box now. We will look into that in our upcoming lab too. Remote management security difference between iOS and Cisco ASA. What I'm trying to emphasize in this slide is basically by an example. Say you have this router of an XYZ company and you have configured Telnet on it. So you have configured Telnet access on it and you want to lock it down. You lock it down by creating an access list that specifies the subnets that are able to access this router and you call those subnets via an access class in the line with UI. Now your company is strict in a manner that it says that any VAN interface, supposedly these are two ISPs connected towards your company, any telnet traffic or any remote uh, access traffic is not allowed from the ISP side. So you have to specify ACLs that deny remote access traffic, that'd be port 22, 23, 80, 443 from the outside. So you define an ACL and apply it to the interface level as well. So you got two layer of restrictions. But in the ASA, you can't even enable SSH or Telnet without specifying the network first and then the interface meaning the subnets are defined first 
and the interface on which you want the SSH or telnet to be enabled, that is defined too. So if you enable the inside interface for telnet, only telnet traffic or SSH traffic will be entertained on that specific interface for those specific networks that you define here. Okay, so I went ahead and fired up GNS3 on the backgrounds and booted this ASA firewall and did some initial config. Let me show you. Show run interface gig 0 slash 0. So this is already configured and my laptop is also configured with this IP address. So let's begin with configuring the telnet part. It is done by the telnet command. And you have to specify next what subnet or what IP address you want to allow on this specific interface. So let's allow 10.30.10.0 255.255.255.0 on this inside interface. What this command basically is emphasizing is that if anyone with a source IP of from the subnet of 10.30.10.0/24 comes in to tell it from the inside interface, allow it to do that. So it's kind of like the access class and the interface ACL applied. I mean, you specify what interface are going to entertain telnet traffic. So by now, if I do a telnet, this is my command prompt on my computer. Let me just do a telnet. Telnet to 10.30.10.1. Now it is working, but it's asking me for a password and I haven't set a password as of yet. Now this is not the enable password that you can uh, just hit enter and be in the privilege mode. It's not going to happen. So you got to hit the password command. And that is not the password, it's the password command. <laughs> well, basically, they have overlapped this command with the password command. So you have to use this for talent. If you do a question mark, you will see that this command is specifically for talent. So let's give that password Cisco for talent. If I do, I'm typing the words Cisco and I'm in. I'm in the user mode of the Cisco firewall. Now I haven't set up an enable password, so it's gonna be no hitting enter will do it. And I'm in the privilege mode. So that is basically how, if you wanna configure Telnet really, really fast. And another thing I wanna show you, if you want any IP address, any source IP addresses to access your firewall, you can do that by specifying like a default gateway mask. You remember that, right? This basically means any and on the inside interface it will take that or you can also be a little bit fast if you want to be a little bit more faster you can just say okay zero zero that basically means any and it's going to give me an error right now saying that it already exists so that is the basic config of a telnet if you want username and passwords that is done by a method list if you don't know what a method list is, uh, there will be a series on AAA, so hang on tight. So AAA authentication telnet, console of it, and call in the local database. And this is all in caps, remember that. What this command basically is telling it to do, it's giving me a warning that local database is empty, there are no username configured. So I have to go ahead and configure a username. Okay, so what this command basically does, it's saying that if anyone comes in via telnet, you will be prompted with a username and password instead of a single password like over here. And the database that it will be calling is the local database. I know it's a little bit different from the iOS, but you know, the concept is the same. So let's try to tell it again. Oh, I haven't set a username. Let me set up username. Cisco, password of Cisco. Try that. Now it's prompting me for a username and password. Cisco is a username and Cisco is a password. Do not do this on production environment. Cisco, Cisco is a bad password. Bad username and a password. Okay, enable. I don't have any enable password, so I am inside the firewall now. 
Okay, moving on to the SSH is pretty much similar to Telnet. First off, we need the username and password that is mandatory in SSH. And then we need to specify the same way we did for Telnet. That was, that was first of all Telnet and the IP address and the interface, right? So for SSH, it's gonna be SSH. I'm gonna specify 0 slash 0, I mean 0 and 0, that basically means any on the inside interface. So now it's enabled for SSH on the inside interface, but I got dictated that search the local database for authentication. So I gotta hit AAA authentication, and this time it's SSH, not Telnet. SSH and uh, SSH console and just check the local database. So that's done. Now, if you already have a key, let me show you. Show crypto key. My pub key, I think. Yeah, RSA. If you already have this key generated, then pretty much I think you can SSH to, to the device. Let me just open up the terminal. Let me just see if I can SSH to this device. 10.30.10.1. Yeah, I think I can because I have that RSA key already generated. So Cisco, Cisco, and I'm in. If you don't have that key generated, um, then the way to generate that is, first of all, you need a domain name. Set up a domain name like xyz.com, whatever your company name is. And then you say crypto key generate most probably you guys know that because you've done that in iOS routers and switches. Modulus, Monster 2 4 is a better modulus. Are you going to replace that RSA key that has already been generated? Yeah. So you have this new key now. Uh, where is it? Let me just check. Yeah. This is your key now. Okay. So that's pretty much it with the ASA. Let's discuss those interesting facts now of the ASA Firewall. Okay, so I went ahead and opened that slide of interesting facts of the ASA. First fact is that you can only tell it on interfaces with security level of 100. Let's see that. Show run interface gig 0 slash 0. This is uh, set to security level of 100. Let's lower that interface gig 0 slash 0. Uh, security level set it to 99 now let's try to tell it this guy tell it 10.30.10.1 uh, and it's not working hmm but the SSH will work but the thing is if you set it in a, any level between 0 to 99 as I stated over here it's not gonna tell it and that is a problem when you're doing a project and you want Telnet access on your firewall, you come across this problem. So be careful about it. Let's do it 100 and let's check it out. Bam, it works now. So that is fact number one. What is fact number two? That is, uh, even if you have privilege level of 15, you're gonna be prompted for that uh, enable password. So let's set up a username admin oh sorry username of admin password admin privilege oh sorry yeah privilege 15 so it's set to privilege level of 15 let's try to tell it with admin username admin admin you see that you still can't get through this privileged level and this will come up again and again every time even if you have privilege level of 15 set and you have to know the enable password okay so what is the third one interface ACLs don't affect management traffic that's cool let us see ACL part again access list um, deny everything I'm gonna deny everything deny sorry what is it Access list deny. Hmm. Oh, what is it saying? 
sorry, I, I have to say, uh, PX is, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing wrong, people? I don't know why, but it's uh, doing something funky with deny is you. I don't know. Let's just say okay, um, MGT deny. How about that? No, it's okay. Okay, let's deny IP any any. I'm gonna deny everything. Access group MGT underscore deny in on the interface outside oh sorry inside everything is gonna be denied show IPX or oh, oh. show access list show access list everything should be denied but you can as you can see I'm already telling it into the firewall so you can tell it in. so finally we wrap up this lecture with the learning checklist review we learned the interesting facts of for telnet or SSH on the ASA and they were indeed interesting you will agree with me now and the concept of remote management security difference between iOS and Cisco ASA is pretty neat and we just configured Telnet and SSH on GNS3 uh, well I hope you've enjoyed this lecture and do subscribe to my channel like and share this video and let me know if you have any issues in the comment box Thank you so much.